The Elder Scrolls Online was released in 2014, making 2024 the 10 year anniversary of the game's launch, at least on PC, which is a huge milestone. The getting here has been quite a journey, but after a rough start, ESO has performed consistently well over time, making it one of the most popular MMOs available today. But even with its popularity and its consistency, no one is talking about this huge problem, which is affecting player enjoyment and progression, and this is an even bigger problem for more experienced players and MMO veterans. Now, In this video, I'll dive into exactly what this problem is and how it can be fixed to help refresh this game moving into year 10 and beyond. Hey everybody and welcome back to the channel, HTM here. If you don't know me, I cover MMOs and RPGs right here on YouTube, but my bigger focus over the past five years or so has definitely been the Elder Scrolls Online. Even though the game has its problems like any other game does, especially those in the MMO space, ESO is still a very good game at its core. And if you've never played it before, I did a full overview here in this video, which I'll link down below if you want to get a good idea of where the game is now heading into the new year. And let me start by saying that 2023 was probably one of the best years for ESO in its entire history, both in terms of content and game updates. I mean, for one thing, 2023 saw the launch of ESO's seventh class, the new Arcanist class, which was extremely well done and a welcome surprise for the game, which was starting to show its age. Now, the Arcanist to me is the perfect class for a game like The Elder Scrolls Online. On the one hand, it is extremely easy to pick up and very user friendly, meaning that new players who've never experienced ESO before could drop in on the Arcanist and immediately feel powerful. Its core abilities like the Fate Carver Beam are just god tier for most forms of content, and the class toolkit makes sense and synergizes really well, while also looking and sounding amazing by the way, huge props to the art, animation, and sound design teams on this one, because the Arcanist design is just fantastic. But also for experienced players like myself, the class had just enough depth with new mechanics like the Crux system, which included unique ways to build and spend this new resource to make the gameplay feel really fresh and interesting. So all in all, the Arcanist class for ESO was a huge win for the game, and I know it brought plenty of new players and new interest in 2023. But that's not all, 2023 also saw some really amazing zones get added to the game, including the Telvanni Peninsula and one of my all-time favorite additions to ESO, the Daedric Plane of Apocrypha, which is just such an achievement aesthetically. I did an entire video on this actually when it first came out because I was honestly floored by the level of detail and the overall experience this new zone brought to the game. The Necrom storyline was also very good and sets up a bigger story arc, which I'm sure we're going to see play out over 2024, maybe even beyond that. If you have not played Necrom yet, I won't spoil anything here other than to say that ESO has done something completely new with the Elder Scrolls lore, which is pretty exciting, and you should definitely check it out. Of course, ESO also invested significant time into bug fixes and quality of life improvements in quarter three of 2023, which I hope they continue to do moving forward, as I think that's also very positive for the game, and it's something the community has been asking for a long time. But I also want to talk about ESO's biggest win in 2023, which it turns out also showcases its biggest problem heading into 2024 and beyond, and that is the Infinite Archive. Now at face value, the Infinite Archive is actually really well-designed content for the Elder Scrolls Online. First of all, it's completely free for all players. It's not a DLC, it's not a chapter, it's not gonna be found in the Crown Store. It's just free to play content, which is amazing. I actually hope that ESO continues to go down this road of free, replayable content to expand on what's already available in the game, moving into 2024 and beyond. I think this is really great. I also appreciate that it doesn't take, you know, a top level coordinated group to do well in the Infinite Archive. I mean, yes, you can enter with a second player, and if both of you and your friend are good at ESO and you have the right build, you'll be able to progress really far. But they also made it so that solo players can enter the Infinite Archive as well, or you can play solo with a companion. And either way, you can still progress, you can have fun, and still earn rewards. I'm also a big fan of how they set up the Infinite Archive itself into this roguelike experience, similar to other recent games like Hades, for example where your goal is basically just to progress as far as possible without losing all your lives. And you also have to improve your character throughout with various buffs and power-ups along the way. The Infinite Archive version of those buffs called Visions and Verses, I think is also done pretty well as a system overall as it mixes in a bit of randomness and excitement into each run. But I think honestly, we probably will see a bit more balancing coming to certain visions in the future as they're just ultra powerful. So don't get me wrong, I really like what ESO did with the Infinite Archive. It's the content 
that I'm playing right now in ESO the most actually, but there is still one crucial aspect that I think misses the mark, which leads to this much bigger problem we need to talk about, and that is itemization. You see, when the Infinite Archive was originally pitched to us as players, we were told that the rewards for beating it would be something completely new to ESO, something called class sets. Now, I don't know about you, but just that name itself, class sets, to me has a certain meaning or expectation in the world of MMOs. I mean, to me, class sets or class weapons based on what I've seen in other games should be better than the typical weapons and armor that you can get from normal activities. That they should be special. In fact, going way back to older MMOs like EverQuest, for example, class weapons were some of the most powerful items you could get in the game, and they actually altered the way you played your class in significant and meaningful ways. Now the problem though with ESO's version of class sets is that they're not particularly better than anything that we already have access to in the game, and in some cases they're actually worse, which I think is a huge missed opportunity in more ways than one. I'm going to get deep into this, so stay with me here. First let's break down those class sets and explain why they are such a big problem not just for the Infinite Archive, but for the overall progression of ESO. Now, the most obvious reason why the new class sets are not great is due to the bonus of the item sets themselves. As I mentioned, generally these new bonuses are not that special, and in most cases you wouldn't decide to use these sets over the current gear that you're already wearing. Arguably the best class set bonus belongs to the Dragonite class set, which gives you on-demand access to major heroism, plus a new buff that boosts your healing and your damage shields, so this is not bad and I could see some players replacing one of their current 5 piece sets to use this bonus, you know, depending on specific content. Now there's the Necromancer class set called Nobility in Decay. This is also pretty interesting and I think more closely meets the expectations of a quote class set by giving you an alternate or unique way to play the class. In this case, the Necromancer set can treat you as an extra corpse, letting you more easily cast corpse-consuming abilities like Mystic Siphon or Detonating Siphon, so this is good in the sense that it expands on what your class can already do, and it can give you new options. But is it really good enough for you to replace one of the two main 5 piece sets that you're currently using? In most cases, I don't think so, and again, this illustrates one of the main problems with class sets, which is even those that are somewhat unique still require you to remove the best bonuses from the other sets that you're currently wearing. Basically, you have to give up something to get this extra, you know, special class set or specialization, but there is a way that ESO could have solved this and made it better pretty easily, which I'm gonna talk about next. But other class sets like the Nightblade set, for example, really don't do anything interesting at all. In this case, only increasing the damage and healing of a few skills that not every Nightblade build is going to use anyway. Now, I do like the fact that the ESO dev team decided that each class set would focus on one particular skill line. So this particular set, Soul Cleaver, buffs all of your siphoning skills as a Nightblade. This does meet the concept of what a class set should do, I think. Plus, it also leaves room for future class sets, so eventually, you know, we'll have a Nightblade assassination focus set and the Nightblade shadow set, but again, the bonuses that we're seeing on these sets are not good enough to force you to drop a better set like let's say Order's Wrath, which buffs all of your offensive abilities, or even less popular sets like Forest Wraith, which actually buffs all of your class skills, not just one specific skill line, and already exists in the game. But the main problem I see isn't that the new class sets are not good enough, the bigger problem for ESO is its itemization structure specifically that we have way too many 5 piece sets to choose from, and that characters can only wear two bonuses at a time, which is extremely limiting. So let's talk about sets for a minute in ESO. I think at this point the game has something like 400 or more sets, and that is a lot. Not only is this extremely overwhelming for new players, but for experienced players it's not a great experience either, because we know that only a handful of these sets are really actually worth getting. For example, I have dozens and dozens of builds and different options posted on my website, hacktheminotaur.com, but all of those builds use maybe 15 to 20 different sets in total. And yeah, I can try to make builds using other sets, but they just won't be as good because the majority of those sets are not that good themselves. So the majority of those 400 plus sets you'll never bother using because a small number of the sets are just significantly better than all the rest. And in this current system, it's nearly impossible to introduce something special, like quote class sets, because they will either be extremely overpowered and every class is going to use their class set and nothing else, 
or they will actually be underpowered, which I believe is what's happening here with the introduction of class sets for Infinite Archive, and they're just not going to be used that much because we have better options. Now I think the solution here is really obvious and hopefully you'll see it too after I explain how this could work. The solution is not to keep introducing more and more sets to the game. This itemization route is already maxed out with 10 years now of ESO reusing the same set types, especially five piece item sets. So I think continuing down that road would be a mistake. The better solution, at least in my opinion, is just to introduce more gear slots into the game and other equipment options instead. The idea here of class sets actually is a perfect chance for ESO to do this. And here's how I imagined it would work in my own mind. Imagine instead of just adding seven more five piece sets to the game, that they simply introduced one new gear slot instead, your class slot. Now call this whatever you want. It could be called your class affinity or your class inspiration or your focus, whatever. The name doesn't really matter. The point is this would be a new gear slot and the only bonuses that could go here would be your class bonus. Now this immediately solves the problem of these new class sets not being good enough to replace your current sets because you wouldn't have to replace your current sets at all to use them. You wouldn't even have to change your build either. Instead, a new slot with a new series of bonuses could be added and this would simply let you extend or refine your build into something slightly better. So hopefully you see where I'm going with this. A, a class set slot would give ESO a lot more room to grow. I actually can't believe they haven't introduced any new gear slots to the game yet. I mean, think about it, 10 years and the game has never gotten one new gear slot in that time. That's crazy. And I think it's a big missed opportunity as well. I mean, just imagine the possibilities for builds and theory crafting that could come easily from this one new class slot. It would almost be like adding subclasses into the Elder Scrolls Online, which I think would be fantastic, especially for experienced players like myself who need some reason to keep playing at endgame. With this class focus slot, now your class has three additional options to specialize into when you're ready to take your build to the next level. Let's look at one class as an example with the Nightblade. Now we already have the one class set that boosts siphoning abilities, the Soul Cleaver set, that's fine. It fits the theme if you want to be a Nightblade Siphoner or a Blood Mage style of build. Now personally, I would just extend this a bit to make it a little more interesting. So not only would it make your siphoning abilities do more damage and cost less, but maybe your other Nightblade skills would now heal you for 5 or 10% of the damage they dealt to really amp up that siphoning aesthetic but not be too overpowered. And again, this bonus would come into a separate gear slot so you wouldn't lose anything in your current build to make this happen. It's just one more layer of specialization. Now eventually ESO would of course add two more class sets or focuses for each class, one for each of the remaining skill lines that each class has access to, but you'd have to pick just one of these as your primary focus. Using Nightblades again as our example, maybe the assassination focus causes you to deal slightly more damage when fighting behind an enemy or it gives you access to some kind of unique backstab attack. And the shadow focus could provide some type of invisibility while moving or maybe for tanks cause incoming attacks to miss for a certain amount of time. I don't know, these are just ideas, but the overall concept I think is much better than simply adding more 5P sets to a game that's already heavily overloaded in this area. Instead of adding even more sets and forcing players to choose, simply add more gear slots to widen the possibilities and types of specialization a character can take. So imagine instead of being just a Nightblade in ESO, Eventually you specialize into a Siphoner Nightblade or an Assassin Nightblade or a Shadow Nightblade. That would be really cool in my opinion. Before you say, well, it's too late now, the five piece class sets are already in the game. I think they could still make this work if they made it to where you could maybe turn in your existing class set pieces to a vendor. And then after you turn in, let's say 10 pieces, you get to collect your new class focus item, sort of like a mythic item where you collect those item fragments over time and eventually combine them together. Same deal, just applied to class sets. But for me, I've been stuck on itemization in ESO for a long time. Personally, I hope they don't just keep adding the same types of sets to the game in 2024 and beyond. I mean, to me, it feels a bit dated, especially those five piece sets, which are very formulaic and you can really only use two at a time. So again, it is very limiting. Like I said, I think new gear slots instead is the way to go to move the game forward now after 10 years. Obviously, I think the class slot is the best idea if they do end up introducing 
new slots for all the reasons I just mentioned, but imagine if they even did this for other things like more ring slots or earrings, maybe a crown or a circlet. These could be pretty easily added to the game without even a lot of graphical changes. I know some people want capes, I don't know if that will ever happen with the current engine, but that's another possibility. I mean, even Baldur's Gate 3 has a slot for underwear, so you know there's plenty of options here for all types of playstyles. Or if not that, at least new set types like one piece, two piece, three piece sets to mix up the possible ways to craft builds. Because again, I feel like this current five piece set formula is just getting a bit stale and it's making ESO start to show its age and its limitations. Now, obviously there are other issues of course, which I hope ESO improves on eventually as well. We've talked about them many times before on this channel. Things like improving solo and quest or an overland difficulty, improving PVP content offerings, even crossplay between platforms. I also see all of these as big barriers that if ESO could just improve on any of these areas, heading now into its 10th year as a game, I think those improvements would go a long way towards extending the game's life, building the game's audience, and keeping ESO around for a lot longer, which is ultimately what I and most other ESO players really want. But what do you guys think? Do you agree with me about itemization being the biggest problem? Or do you think ESO has bigger issues that it needs to solve? Let me know what you think down in the comments section below. And as always, thanks so much for watching. I hope you're doing well. Stay safe out there and I will see you around in the next video.